Okay, so what's your name? Ernest. Nice to meet you, Ernest. So the question we're talking about is, uh, you know, the culture here, and what's the term Bible Belt mean to you? Uh, usually it brings up hypocrites, but at the same time, it, I have mixed feelings about it because there's a lot of good people, but maybe they don't practice what they're trying to get everyone else to do, but then again, I guess it's kind of hard to always do that. So I guess as long as people are trying, I guess that that's what matters. Okay. So the, so the Bible Belt gets its name because of the, you know, large amount of Christian churches in the area of the Bible Belt. So what do you believe? What do you believe uh, about the afterlife? What do you believe happens after death? I really, I want to think there's a heaven or something, but I, I believe there's a God that created everything. Okay. I, I want to believe in Jesus, but like today I'm having my doubts, so. Okay. Uh, I, I really don't know. <laughs> what do you um, What do you think about the Bible? The Bible claims to be God's word. Do you think that's true? Uh, I no. I don't think it's like living flesh, like they say. Uh, it's been picked. You know, we'll take this and we're gonna leave out uh, Enoch. Like what? Who? who Decides that, like, some council in Nicaea or whatever. I don't, I don't see why. Well, the Bi the Bible you're talking about the canon or what books constitute right. the Bible. That was that was not decided at the Council of Nicaea. Okay, my, my bad. Okay. Yeah, it's it's a common common misconception. So it's something that is passed around. But what was it was already accepted as the Bible pretty much right when the books were written, um, which, is, which was before, the, before 100 AD. And the council was in 350, I think, or 325. Okay. So it was a few hundred years before that. Okay, um, cool. So the, Bible, so the Bible was always received, you know, the books in the Bible were received as the books in the Bible pretty much from the get-go. So, you know, the Bible about the afterlife claims that there's a heaven and hell, right? You probably know that. Right. And you said that you believe in a God and you would like to believe in a heaven, so you're kind of not sure about that? Some days, I mean, I'm positive. I know for a fact, like, you couldn't sway me either way, mm -hmm. but I, I hate to admit <laughs> I'm weak, but I guess I fall weak sometimes, sure. you know? So if you were to die, you know, today or something, and, and God were to ask you, why should I let you into heaven? How do you think you'd answer that? Uh, I treated others the way I expect to be treated. Mm -hmm. and mostly did the best I could, uh, other than a few certain things I'm presently having difficulty with. Sure. So, so you think it's because you've been a pretty good person, in other words? Yeah. Okay. Do you know Do you know how God judges goodness in a person? Like the standard I, that he uses? I don't know why I've never asked or never even thought that. Yeah. Well, you've probably heard of the Ten Commandments, right? Well, yeah. So that's God's law. That's his standard of what's right and what's wrong, a summary of it. So do you think you've kept the Ten Commandments or broken them? Uh, there's a lot I've broke. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple I haven't, I guess. Okay. Yeah, because, I mean, I would say that I've broken them, too, because you think about them, like, one of them is you shall not lie. Right. So you think you told a lie before? Oh, yeah. Yeah, probably countless. That's, that's what yeah. I'd say for me. Another one is uh, do not steal. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Jesus said, if you look at a woman with lust that you're not married to, that's sexual immorality. Yeah, 10 minutes, less than, yeah. Right. Um, so those are, those are three that we just looked at. Yeah. And we just know, we already know that we've broken those. So if God were to judge us based upon the Ten Commandments, is he going to find us innocent or guilty? 
I'm, I'm guilty. Yeah. I guess it depends on the degree of like, you know, if that, everything's relative, like, yeah, I did this 10 minutes ago, but I've repented since then, but then I've done it again. So mm -hmm. I, I don't know how, like, well, think of it like this, though. If I, if I was on trial in the court in a courtroom you know, downtown, and I said to the judge, "Yeah, you know, I murdered a few people, but I'm really sorry," right. he still he still can't let me go, right? No, I don't think so. So saying sorry doesn't fix the problem, yeah. does it? So we're guilty. We already yeah. admitted that. So that's the problem. So if God were to judge us, He'd find us guilty. And what do you think then? Would He give us heaven or hell if He judged us based upon what we've done? I, well, if, I guess. That's why Jesus was sent. So I, I, that that is like pushing me more towards believing in Jesus. Let's we'll talk and, about and that. Changes by the hour. Okay. Sometimes. Well, let's talk about Jesus in a second. But just based upon what we've done, God's going to look at us and say, you, "You're guilty." Yeah, definitely. And you believe God's good, I assume, right? Yeah. He's righteous. Yeah. Meaning that he can't just overlook guilty people. Like, like, again, if I was in the courtroom and the judge said, I know you murdered, but no big deal. Right. He'd be a bad judge. So God, <laughs> God's not like that. Right. So, so we're guilty. And what that means is a very serious thing is that we deserve justice in hell forever. It's very serious. But you've already mentioned Jesus. So what did God do so that guilty people don't have to go to hell, but can, can be forgiven? and then go to heaven. What did God do? It's, it came, came to earth as a, a human and let, him, let himself be sacrificed for us. So what did his sacrifice, his death on the cross, accomplish? Uh, it saved mankind, because I think after a while, uh, hell would have been just full and there wouldn't be many people in heaven. Okay. Well, like we said, we know not just you and me who've admitted to breaking the law, but we know everybody around us has broken it too. Literally yeah. everybody. Nobody's kept the Ten Commandments. Right. So all of us deserve hell. That's the bad news. So Jesus sacrificed himself. See, let me explain it this way and then see what you think. So, like I said, I deserve this penalty because of my law breaking, right? And that's hell. But what Jesus came to do when he died on the cross, my guilt, my sin was transferred to him so that he was punished instead of me. See, my sins are going to be punished one way or the other, either on me in hell or on Jesus on the cross. So if my penalty has been paid for by Jesus, does God have any charges against me anymore? It wouldn't seem so, no. He wouldn't, right? No. So he no longer is angry or he has to give justice against me for my sins because my sins have been, he's poured out his wrath on Jesus instead as a substitute. Right. That's how he accomplished forgiveness, because God can't just overlook sin. He has to deal out justice. So instead of dealing the justice I deserve on me, he deals the justice I deserve on Jesus. Right. That makes sense? Yeah. Do you know, according to the Bible, how good of a person you would have to be to earn a spot in heaven? I, I, I don't think, it, I don't guess it's possible. You're right about that, um, and here's why. Because the standard is perfection. Yeah. And that means you can never tell one lie or stretch the truth, never look with lust even once, never steal anything, never do anything, never have any idols before God, never use his name in vain, never disobey your parents or whatever, you know, or people who are, have charge over you. That is really weighty stuff that the standard is perfection. Jesus said you have to be perfect. So here's the other thing that Jesus did. So I'm not good enough to go to heaven because I'm not perfect. But Jesus did keep the law perfectly. So his law keeping can be transferred to my account. Just like if, if I earned, you know, a million dollars, worked really hard for it, and then transferred it to your bank account. You didn't earn any of it, but now it's on your account. Now you're the millionaire, right? Right. It's like that. I didn't do the works of righteousness. I didn't keep the law, but he kept it and transfers it to my account so that before God on judgment day, what's he going to see? Somebody who's perfect. Right. Not because I was perfect, because Jesus is perfect yeah. for me. So my sins transferred to him, his righteousness transferred to me. Boom. Now has the standard to go to heaven been met? Perfection? Yeah, it has. Not by me, but by him. So that's what, that's what it means that salvation is a free gift. Because you notice, you notice what I've done in this? Nothing. 
he's done everything. He's kept the law for me and he's died for me. I've done, only thing I've done is sin, right. which is not going to help, you know. So do you know, what do you have to do in order to receive the salvation that Jesus accomplished? Uh, ask him into your heart and accept him and tell him. Okay. Do you know the Bible never says to accept Jesus into your heart? It's something that people say a lot, but it's not actually in there. there yeah, I've come to find out there's a lot of stuff <laughs> that I thought just assumed like, were in the Bible and they aren't. So. Yeah. So he, here's, what, here's what Jesus and, and his uh, disciples taught. They said, repent and believe. Okay, repent and have faith, in other words. So do you, do you know what repent means, that word? More or less saying sorry for your misgivings. <laughs> yeah, your sins. So, so, yeah, asking God for forgiveness, it's also a, a hatred of them turning from your sins and saying, God, I am so sorry for all the ways that I offended you with my lying. Lying is, is, God hates deceiving. He doesn't deceive, he hates when we do it with our lusting, our sexual morality, our, our stealing, etc., etc. And that's what repentance is, being sorry for them, hating them. And then do you know what faith means in, biblically or what it means to believe in Jesus? To believe and not have any true or like evidence, I guess? Oh, no, 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 no. Belief is not blind faith. It's not okay. blind faith. Um, you should, we have reasons to believe in Jesus. What faith is, faith is really uh, trusting. Okay. So think about it like that. We've talked about this. If I said to God, let me into heaven because I've been a good boy, right? right? Who's that trusting in? Right. Me. I'm trusting in myself. But if I say, God, accept me into heaven, not because of what I have done, but I trust that what Jesus did will count for me, that he kept the law for me, he took the penalty for me. Right. Now who am I trusting in? Jesus, Jesus right? That's yeah. what faith means. It means... Turning your back on your, your own works and saying, I'm not, there's nothing that I do that would earn favor in God's sight because I'm not perfect. That's the only way. So Jesus had to be perfect for me. He had to take my penalty for me too. So if I trust in him, he'll save me. So that's really what it is. So when we, when we say, you know, God, let me into heaven, that your answer to that question is going to reveal what you're trusting in. That make sense? Yeah. So before, do you remember what you said? I said the question of why God will let you into heaven. Who are you trusting in? Myself. Yeah. And that's what we all do. But what do you think now? Knowing, knowing the standard that God requires, requires perfection. Do you think you should still trust in yourself? That's kind of a double-edged question. But okay. What do you mean? Well, I mean, you have to... Well, I don't... You have to have something to to get up and just do anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, and I guess people should. I guess I should live for Jesus, and that way that is my reason for getting up. Mm -hmm. So I guess my double-edged thing kind of went both ways. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, I, I need to learn to look at things like that. Yeah. So, so like I said, Jesus' call is to repent and to trust in him, what he did. You know, right before he died, he said, it is finished. Meaning, the penalty has been paid for. It's, I've accomplished salvation for my people. That's what he was saying. It's done. Which means that there's nothing that I do to complete what he did. He already completed it. He said it's finished, right? And then, you know, on the third day, he rose again from the dead, right? So those, those things that he did is the basis. It's, it's how I'm going to be saved. And I'm just trusting in him, not trusting in myself. You see, this is the thing that distinguishes Christianity from literally every other thing in the world. Every other religion in the world. And our natural inclination is to say, I'm going to try better to get my, earn my way into favor with God. That's what we naturally think. But, but Jesus tells us, God tells us in the Bible that you can't earn it. He says salvation is by grace, meaning it's a free gift. This is Ephesians 2, 8. It says, by grace you have been saved through faith, and it's not your own doing, it's a gift of God, not a result of works so that no one can boast. And you see, if we stand before God and say, let me into heaven because of what I've done, we're boasting in ourselves. Yeah. 
And God says, no, salvation is not like that. It's look to what Jesus did. He earned it and he gives it as a free gift. And that's how salvation is. Yeah. Which means all glory goes to him and none goes to, right. to me. Yeah, because I didn't do anything to, to right. help. So what are your thoughts on that? Because I know that's, that's different than what you originally said, so I want to hear what you're thinking about it. <laughs> I like the way you explained the, the whole... Yeah, I... I... Surely you're, you're some kind of preacher, evangelist, something. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, you're... You're awesome at whatever you do. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what I mean. <laughs> I was just thinking about overdosing, like, for real. Yeah? Like, wanting to die. Hmm. So. Why do you have those thoughts? Suicidal thoughts? Uh, it's it just... I guess I, I probably, like, want to, like... I, I I give the wrong things to, to God, like the wrong. I don't like. I should be thankful for good or bad, I, I, and and not try to take credit. I guess, mm -hmm. or maybe I shouldn't like. I mean, I, I don't know how to explain it. I, I don't want to sound like I have a huge ego because I don't think I do, but then again, it's like if I am doing good and doing the right thing, I want to take the credit, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And I shouldn't do that because it, it's... It's all through Jesus, so I feel like I'm talking myself into a, I don't know, but thank you regardless. Yeah. Sorry. No, I, I understand. So I guess, I guess the main thing is, is that, you know, you, you have, you know, you have value. You know that, right? As a, as a human being, as a man, you have right. value, you know? And that God created you. Yeah, I have trouble realizing that sometimes. Yeah, a lot of us do. A lot of us do. Yeah. But the thing is, is that no matter what's happened in your life, no matter what you've done, trust the the darkness in our hearts is deep. We are very, very evil people. Right. Really. Yeah. And you and I think that you are getting that. Yeah. The more I read about history, it's like I don't know how people have children. <laughs> I wouldn't, no, I wouldn't bring a kid in this world. It's a scary nothing. world, isn't it? It's yeah, a mess, it's messed up world because fucked. because of us. Part of mine. It's, it's yeah. because of us. Oh yeah. And that's why this this thing about Jesus, what he did, is so profound. So such a big deal. Yeah. Is that what he what he's saying is that you guys are such vile and wicked people, but nevertheless, he still loved people to save them right. when they were in no way deserving of that. God could have been, God would have been totally just to send every last one of us to hell forever. Right. But he didn't do that. Yeah. He wanted to send Jesus to save a bunch of people. And that's why I'm, that's one of the reasons I want to talk to you, man. I mean, like, you have value to God. You have value to me. And we just met. But it doesn't matter. Right. Because just like the rest of everybody, we're all sinners. And we are all in need of salvation in Christ. And... That, that's, where, that's where we can find our identity and our, our purposes in Him and not be, not be despairing or be de depressed. We can have joy in, in Christ, truly. Right. So you're saying that you, kinda, you, have, you have some depression? Is that what you're saying? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, ultimately, this is, this is the ultimate answer. It doesn't mean that Christians don't struggle with sadness, because I certainly right. have, and, and even depression. But that's because I think I look too much in here. Right and not also at the same time looking to Christ. Because he's my, if I look in here, I'll say, look at what an evil person I am and, and despair. But if I look to Christ and say, but look what he has done. He's loved me, he loves me. And he has 
die for me. Not because I was lovely or, or you know, lovable, but because he was, he's just, this is who he is. He's right. merciful and gracious. And that, that's the, the good news about it. So anyway, um, so you understand this, what I told you. You understand yeah. how to be forgiven of your sins. Yeah, and you explained it better than I've heard anyone. Yeah. Yeah. So it's something to think about. Repent, repenting of all your sins and trusting in Christ alone instead of trusting in your own good works. Because right. we really don't have good works. Yeah. Because <laughs> everything we do, we do a lot of sin and everything we do is still really tainted with sin, isn't it? Right. Yeah. So we're really, we really need a Savior. Um, okay. Well, that's, that's pretty much it. Is there anything you'd like to add? No. I appreciate you stopping me. Yeah. Can I give you a little thing that I wrote and you can keep it? A little sure. book that I wrote, a little pamphlet about what we just talked about? Yeah. Cool. All right, this is it. And it, just follow the page numbers. It's a little bit confusing when you okay. open it up. But the page numbers, and that's it. And um, you know, my email's on there. Okay. Just so you know, at the very end, in the back there. Awesome. So. All right, man. Well, thank, thank you for taking the time to talk. I enjoyed meeting yeah. you. Thank you okay. for, your, for talking to me. All right, thank you. Yeah. Thank you.